beginning was the Word. You know it. Say it along with me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know that. Amen. And it goes on to say the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, him, the Word, and without him was not anything made that was made. Talking about the Word of God. And here's what I've learned over my 47 years. Insight into the word of God, having insight into the word of God can make you a very powerful individual in this life. Insight into the word of God can make you a very powerful individual in this life. I didn't say carrying your Bible makes you powerful. Amen. I didn't say coming to church where the word is preached makes you powerful because many people can attend a service where the word is preached and they still not absorb or get what they need to get uh, from the expounding of the scripture. Amen. So, so having insight, that's what you want. You, be, you need to be able to understand the words that are spoken here, that are spoken by God. Amen. In the creation, uh, you find that uh, the things that God made had no problem absorbing, engaging, understanding the words that came out of the mouth of the creator. When he said, let there be light, Light didn't sit there scratching his head. Should I? Would I? Could I? No, when he said, let there be light, there was light. Amen. Same thing with the waters and the, and the stars in the sky and the birds flying in the air and all of creation, when God spoke it, they immediately responded exactly as he spoke it. His word is powerful like that. It's only when he gets to man that he have a problem. Because he spoke the word to Adam and Eve, and for some reason, they didn't have insight into what he was saying. You know, now we criticize Adam and Eve a lot, but you know if they knew what they were doing when they ate that fruit. They wouldn't have done it. They just didn't have the insight to know, so Satan was able to deceive them. Satan said, you shall not surely die. <laughs> you know, you shall not surely die. And then, and then when Eve ate the apple, and Adam walked up, and he saw that Eve did not surely die, as far as he was concerned, didn't look like she was dead to him. I mean, keep in mind that he didn't know what dead looked like because nobody had never died. So he didn't have insight. They didn't have insight into what God was saying, and therefore they were deceived. And it's, it's, it's true with us that if we don't have insight in the word of God, the words that come out of God's mouth, the words that God speak to us, if we don't have insight, we can be deceived, we can be destroyed. Our lives can be messed up down here. I mean, we see all the way through the Bible examples of people whose lives were messed up because they didn't have insight into what God had spoke to them. They heard it, but just because you hear it don't mean you have insight into it. Because understanding helps. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get ye wisdom, but in all that getting, get understanding. So you can know the consequences. How many times have we spoke to our kids while trying to raise them up on the right path? And they heard what they, we said, they knew what we, but they didn't have insight. They don't get insight until they end up in jail and they say, I wish I had listened. They don't get insight until they end up in the emergency room and I wish I had listened. Amen. So insight into the word of God can make you a very powerful individual in this life. Amen. 2 Timothy 3.15 says the Holy Scriptures are able to make you wise 
unto salvation. There are a lot of people that claim salvation, but they don't have wisdom in what they have. It takes wisdom even after you get saved. Amen. You get saved, and the next morning the devil tells you you ain't saved. If you don't have wisdom, if somebody don't hurry up and get some wisdom in you, you know, as newborn babes, if you don't hurry up and decide to sincere milk of the word so that you can begin to grow, the enemy can deceive you and take everything you got. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if you don't have insight, he can take everything you got. God says, I created, I have created you, you now exist. But for you to have life, you need my word and you need to submit to my word. I mean, Adam and Eve were alive, but in order for them to have the life that God intended for them, they needed to submit to God's word. He gave them his word. He said, of all the trees, you can freely eat. One tree that if you eat from it, the very day you eat from it, you die. They didn't have the understanding that we have. We know that there is a physical death and a spiritual death. And they died spiritually. The day, the very t moment they ate from that fruit, they died spiritually and lost a lot. They lost a lot because one minute they're in the garden, no death, no sickness, no disease, no pain, no hurt. Got everything they want. Don't have to work. Eve don't have to worry about labor pains. And then next minute, yeah, the women say, yeah, I can understand. I can relate to that. But the minute they ate from that forbidden fruit, everything changed. Everything changed. Everything got messed up. So God creates us. We all exist. We all have existence. But if we don't do due diligence to understand and have insight in the word of God and submit to the word of God, uh, then, then we we, we mess up. We can't, we can't have the victory we're supposed to have. We can't overcome like we should overcome. The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. And while we try to navigate through this world, while we try to navigate, trying to Google our way through it, and, and, and it's, it's, it's challenging. It's tough. Most of the people we know, most of the people we are around us, they mess up. Amen. Even those that are supposed to be highly knowledgeable, they mess up. Even the strong men, they mess up. Amen. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Verse 4 goes on to say, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. In him. You know what? Life ain't in all those vitamins and minerals you take. I ain't telling you not to take them. You want to take them? Take them. Somebody's making a killing off them. <laughs> ain't them things is high. <laughs> you know, amen. They're, they're, they're giving you the same thing that you get if you would eat the right foods. Yeah. See, somebody, somebody told us to eat the right foods. Instead of eating the right food, we eat what we want, and then we go buy a bunch of vitamins. <laughs> Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Come on, you know better. You, you can see through that. So it's all about having the insight. The scripture goes on to say in verse 5, And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. You know, they, the light shined, but those in the dark couldn't see it. The scripture says he, still talking about the word, the word is referred to as he. He came unto his own which is the Jews, and, the own, and his own received him not. But, 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 to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. That's what I'm talking about right there. Promote the word of God in your life. Promote the word in your life. Insight into the word of God can make you a very powerful individual. You might not look powerful to everybody because everybody can't see the power of God in you. They didn't see it in Jesus. Many didn't see it in Jesus. He is God in the flesh, in the earth, and many people didn't even see the power of God in him. Here's a man that's getting ready to die and raise himself up. 
and most of the people around him, even his disciples, could not conceive of the idea of him being raised up again. Amen. First of all, they didn't want to believe that he was going to die. Peter said, be it far from you. Now you're going to stay here and build us a kingdom. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. I have a kingdom, but it's not of this world. So he died and raised himself up. And no, most of the people didn't see it. Nobody saw it until after he was raised up. After he was raised up, then people began to see. Amen. The first one that showed up at the grave was a female. And you know what he told her? He told her, go tell my disciples that I have risen from the dead. That's the gospel. Being risen from the dead is the gospel. That woman carried the gospel to Peter and James and John. How are you going to say she can't preach? She was the first one to carry the gospel after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And now you're going to say she can't preach? She was preaching before men were. Because she was the first one while the disciples with, them, with their masculine he-man selves were hiding out. Here this woman shows up at the grave. Amen. Now, I'm not saying she knew he was going to be raised from the dead. But at least she showed up. Sometimes there's credit for just showing up. Ain't that right? And because she showed up first, she was the first one to carry the gospel of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. I ain't going to tell no woman not to preach. I ain't going to tell no child not to preach. I ain't going to tell no man not to preach. I ain't going to tell no rooster not to preach. I ain't going to tell no donkey not to preach. Because the Holy Ghost will use whosoever. The scripture says he take the foolish things of this world and confound the wise. Jesus on one occasion even said the rocks would cry out. So I ain't going to tell nobody not to preach. Sound like that's something all of us need to be sharing in. Amen. Life is in the word. Life is in God. The scripture goes on to say that the word was made flesh. In verse 14, the word was made flesh. Amen. And was right here dwelling among us in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ walking the earth as Mary's baby is the same word that spoke the sun into existence. That great big ball of fire, 93 million light, way, light years away. Burning so much that even 93 million light years away from the earth, it still got enough fire to warm the earth. And sometimes it get too hot. Amen. We complain about heat and the sun, the source of that heat is 93 million light years away. And we said, it's hot out here. That sun is hot. Imagine if you were a little bit closer. Nah, that ain't the message today, but you know, you see where I could go with that, but I'm going to leave that alone right now, okay? Amen. So, so, so the word of God was dwelling among us, and we are to consume that word in order for us to have life. That's why Jesus on one occasion told the disciples, Actually, he told all, the whole crowd that was out there listening, including a lot of the Pharisees and Sadducees, he said, except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. You know, somebody snatched their glasses off. You think we're cannibals, that we're going to be eating people's flesh? Oh, he done lost it now. Some of them already didn't want to believe in him, and this was their excuse right there. We, man, we ain't going to eat your flesh and drink your blood. What's wrong with you? But they didn't understand. They didn't have insight. Amen. They didn't have insight to relate what Jesus said about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. They didn't have the insight to relate that to the scripture that says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, that shall man live by. But they weren't able, they didn't have the insight to piece that together. They didn't have the insight to piece that, amen, praise God, to the Passover. Jews loved the Passover. 
Amen. They were crazy about the Passover. And what did they do in the Passover? They kill a lamb and they cook some bread. And they eat the meat and eat the bread. And Jesus is trying to tell you, I am that bread that come down from heaven where your fathers did eat in the wilderness. I'm that bread. I'm that manna. He was trying to get them to have insight in the words that was coming out of his mouth. Amen. Because he says, these words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life unto you. Amen. It's not just a good sermon. You know, folk, folk looking for a good sermon, they search YouTube to try to find a good sermon. I want a good sermon where everybody's shouting. I want a good sermon where people run around the church. I want a good sermon where people are falling out. Now, you need the truth of God's word. And if you get the truth of God's word, the truth of God's word is powerful if nobody runs. The truth of God's word is powerful if nobody jumps up and down, swing from the chandeliers, amen, step over pews. Oh, y'all remember that. Now the preacher come here and step over the pew. Hey, man, did nobody get healed? Did nobody get saved? <laughs> hey, man, did nobody get no groceries? I'm like, what? But I made a mental note. Let's not invite him back no more. And y'all ain't seen him since. You know you ain't seen him since. Some of you know him because he's from your community. <laughs> Amen. But that's 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 what people that's what people want. They want they want this strange fire. They want this. They add stuff. That's what they do in church services now. They add stuff, you know, so that so that it'll look like that God is moving. They give give the appearance that God is moving. Some of them will fuss you out until you shout. Amen. This is a dead service in here. Ain't y'all got the Holy Ghost? Amen. How many people in here saved? Y'all saved? Amen. Everything dead need to be buried. Uh, y'all heard that before. Amen. But I found out, amen, it ain't the one that's jumping. It ain't the one that's running. It's the one that's getting insight into the words that come from the mouth of God. You need insight into those words because those words will make you powerful. The scripture says in verse 6 that there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light that light all men uh, that, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which light of every man that cometh into the world. That, what that says is that the word of God has light available for every born human being. Everybody that's born in this world, there's light available for that person. Amen. And just like John, we are to bear witness to that light. We are to bear witness to that true light because uh, that same truth that makes our lives powerful. Amen. And I hope you realize how powerful your life is uh, once you obtain insight into the word of God and you eat that word. Amen. And you let that word of God nourish you. I hope you understand how powerful your life is. Amen. Because Jesus says uh, that you reach a point where he seals you to the day of redemption. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all didn't, y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all must thought that I was going to give a, a that, that sounded like a clap for a free movie ticket or something. Seals you to the day of redemption. Your name is written in heaven. When the saints go marching in, you're going to be in the number. Heaven is reserved for you. Ah, oh boy, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. See, the sharing of the preaching of the word gives men light that opens their eyes to the life of God. Your eyes have to be open. We became blinded as a result of what Adam and Eve did, and then they handed it down through their DNA to us. We're just as blind as Adam and Eve was. Amen. Same DNA. But the word opens our eyes. 
The preaching of the word gives us light that opens our eyes to the life of God. Amen. John came to bear witness of that light. And that light is the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. The scripture says, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Amen. Lest the God of this, I mean, whom the God of this world has blinded their minds. So they're lost. They can't see it. Because the God of this world has blinded their minds. Before I got saved, the God of this world, Satan the devil, had blinded my mind. So I couldn't see the life of God. But when the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the image of God. No, it says, which is the image of God. The light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the image of God. Shine in their hearts. And when it shines in their hearts, now the, the eyes of their heart is open. The eyes of their understanding is open. Amen. Jesus is the light of the world. We hear that all the time. The word is the light of the world. Christ in you is the hope of glory. The word in you is the hope of glory. I desire the word because it's quick and it's powerful. It's alive and it's powerful. I desire the word because the words that are spoken are spirit and they are life. If you don't have the life, amen, if you don't feel like you have that life, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. If you don't feel that you have that life, then you need more Jesus. You need more word. Amen. Eat it up. Eat it up. Eat more scripture. I desire the word because the sincere milk of the word allows me to grow. Newborn babes, when you first get saved, you should desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Don't just get saved and join the church and then show up every Sunday so they can check your name off. No, you got to get engaged. No, I didn't come here to sit. I come to eat. I come to absorb. I come to take in. I want some input. Because if I get some input, I can have some output. <laughs> That's going to have to catch up with you right there. I desire the word of God that I may be cleansed through the word. Jesus said you are clean through the word. You got a problem in your life? Yes, you do. You struggle with sin? Yes, you do. Amen. Do you know how to solve your problems with sin? Do you know how to overcome your struggles with sin? Eat more scripture. Jesus said you are cleansed through the word. Amen. That I've spoken unto you and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Get more truth. I don't care what the problem is. I don't care what the issue is. I don't care how you're being challenged in your flesh and in your mind. The word will resolve it for you. Oh, I wish I could convince church folk, amen, to stop trying to reach out to folks' prayer lines and reach for the word. The power is in the word. Nobody has power in this life outside of the word of God. Amen. You need the word of God. I don't need no prayer line. I need the word. I don't need no oil on my forehead. I need the word. I don't need you laying your hands on me. You might be COVID infected. I don't know. No, I'm just saying that. But uh, I need the word because I know the word. Y'all laugh, but y'all know y'all cut them prayer lines out, didn't you? <laughs> Amen. Cut them prayer lines out when COVID came. Amen. But I, I, I desire the word. I like to study that I might show myself approved unto God. Man, you know what? I believe that if I, if I get God's approval, amen, hear me now. If I get God's approval and I get in favor with God, you know how sometimes you try to suck up to the boss on your job? Boy, y'all act like y'all ain't never done that. You, you, you want to get promoted? And you saw several other people get promoted. Amen. I never forget. Amen. One time, praise God. Amen. Somebody got promoted above me. Amen. Because they got in close with the boss. And I'm a, you know, I'm all spiritual Christian, sitting back. You know, I don't need them. I don't need to suck up to nobody. I don't need the brown nose. 
Amen. Next thing I know, this person done flew all by me. Because it happens. You see it on your job sometimes. People get in, they get in uh, with the boss, and the next thing you know, they're making three times as much as you're making. You know, and you're talking about them, but they're spending money. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? I want to get in. I want, if, I, if I'm a brown nose, I want a brown nose with the Almighty. If I want to suck up, I'm going to suck up to the Almighty. If I'm going to try to get close to somebody, I want to get close to the Almighty. Because I believe if I get in favor with him, I'll be like David. I can step out in the valley against a Goliath and know that Goliath got to fall. Amen. We used to say coming up, if you see me in the woods fighting a bear, don't help me. Help the bear. Amen. <laughs> when you got favor with God, you can live that kind of powerful life. Knowing that he got your back. And I know he ain't got my back because I'm perfect. He ain't got my back because I did everything right. <laughs> Amen. He got my back because I love him. Amen. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Amen. So I studied the word that I might meet God's approval. I meditate in the word day and night. Amen, that I might be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen, I'm tired of being shaken and tossed and turned by every wind, every storm, every time somebody talk about me behind my back, every time somebody mistreat me. There, I, I was feeling good, amen, I was happy, and then I found out somebody lied on me behind my back. Amen, and here I go again, roller coaster. We got any roller coaster saints in here? Up and down, round and round. You know how it is. Amen. Every little thing bothers you. Every little thing, amen, knocks you off your cue. You, you, you know, you, 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 was, you was walking it and you was talking it and you, you was believing it and you was feeling it. And then somebody mistreated you. I don't want to be like that. Amen. I want to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. You can, the wind can blow and I might bend a little bit, but I'm going to stand right back up. I might bend backwards, but I'm coming right back in place. That's what I want to be like. I want to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth my fruit in my season. Amen. My leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever I do, it's going to prosper. Amen. To be able to look at your life and say, you know what? I really didn't want that that bad. I, you know, I said I wanted it, but I really didn't want it that bad. And there it is. Lord gave it to me anyway. I wasn't desperate for it. I just kind of mentioned that I like it. And then before you know it, the Lord provides. Amen. Having favor with God. That's who I want to amen brown nose with. I'm brown nose with God. Meet his approval. So that whatsoever I do, it'll prosper. Wherever, amen, my feet trod. Amen. I searched the scriptures that I might have eternal life. Amen. I got saved. And I know that being saved means that I'm going to heaven. But I didn't take that for granted. So I kept searching. <laughs> amen. Because I wanted to understand the gospel that saved me. Amen. That gospel powerful enough to save me, convert me, change my life. And I knew I was saved. Didn't know but one scripture, but I knew I was saved. All I knew was Romans 10 and 9. That's what they showed me, and I believed, and I was saved, and I believed that. But I didn't stop there. I kept on searching. <laughs> Amen. I searched all over. Amen. I wanted to make sure I had insight into what God had done in my life. Amen. I had the word in my heart that I might not sin against him. Amen. That's what I do. I love the word. I promote the word in my life, and I hide it in my heart because that's what keeps me from sinning. You know what don't keep me from sinning? The pastor following me around everywhere I go. I'm going to follow, I'm gonna follow her home because she's, she's supposed to be single. I'm going to park across the street, make sure ain't nobody. You know, I'm going to follow, follow. Some of y'all some of y'all laughing because you know if I did that, <laughs> I know when to stop. I'm going to stop right there on that one. Amen. But, but, but I hide the word in my heart 
I don't sin because I hide that word in my heart. I don't sin. I don't, I don't, I don't stop sinning because my wife check up on me every five minutes. Where you at? Who's that voice I hear in the background? That ain't what keep me from sinning. Amen. Call Minister, Minister Gardner. You see my husband. That, don't, that ain't what keep me from. No, that ain't what keep me from sinning. I don't sin because thy word have I hid in my. Oh. <laughs> I was just using that for example. My wife ain't called you, Minister Gardner, has she? Has she? Has she really? No. Okay. <laughs> I desire the word of God because the word of God is like a fire shut up in my bones. Amen. You know what? Sometimes when I'm sick and weak and don't feel like I got no strength, the word can fire me up. It's got turbo power. It kicks into another gear. It kicks my whole life into another gear. The word is encouraging. Jeremiah said it was like fire. Boy, I wish I had some voice left. Amen. I preach it. I preach the word. I engage the word. I promote the word in my life. I study the word, and then I preach the word because the preaching of the word heals the sick. You know, you, you, you can preach the word of God to folk, and they can get healing and deliverance without you ever laying hands on them or pouring oil on them. Because that's how powerful, the power's in the word. I don't, I don't care what else you do. You can, if you want to lay hands, lay hands. If you want to pour oil, pour oil. If you want to tell them to turn around seven times, you know, so they can get dizzy and fall down, make it look like, make it look spiritual, you do that. But ain't no power, ain't no healing coming outside of the word. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction I love the word because it opened the eyes of the blind set at liberty them that are bruised I desire the word of God I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes so I hope that as a result of this these few minutes of expounding on that particular this particular topic of promoting the word in your life promoting the word in your life you know, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about studying the scripture like you the preacher. Yeah, study it like you the preacher. And you should be because you need to preach to yourself. There's a whole lot of stuff you might be in right now that you need to preach yourself out of. You don't need no witch doctor. Amen. You don't need nobody to read your palm. Amen. You don't need nobody to look in the, uh, what's, what's that round circle? Glass, crystal ball. You don't need nobody looking at no crystal ball. Tell you what you like. You don't need no almanac. You know, some people buy almanacs. You don't need no lottery. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I didn't mean to say that one. That one slipped out. That one slipped out right there. <laughs> but you don't need no lottery. You get close to God, God will provide. He'll bless you. Now, I noticed, I noticed. I noticed y'all got quiet on that one, so I'm going to leave it. I'm back up off that one. I, you know, ain't mad with the lottery because the lottery is, um, is, is funds education. So if you are giving money to the lottery, to the North Carolina lottery, what you're doing is you're funding education. And at the same time, you're making a few people rich. Because everybody wins up you. <laughs> And you see them on TV, they won $11 million, and you're like, I've been playing this lottery for 15 years. So you're funding education, and you're making some other folk rich, so I ain't mad with you. But pay your tithes, and let the Lord open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. All right, I'm going to stop right now. Amen. I hope that I've given you enough that will motivate you and inspire you to look a, bit, a little bit closer at your Bibles, a little bit closer at the Scriptures, because Jesus said that, that we're not to live off natural things, bread alone, but we're to, we're to live off every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, and that's what he's talking about. You want life. 
You want life. Eat the word three times a day. You eat natural meals three times a day, at least. Because if you count the snacks and the seconds, you know, and, and all the buffets, you know, I wish we would buffet the Bible. <laughs> buffet the Bible. I mean, pile it up to the plate is running over, you know. <laughs> Let's buffet the Bible. Let's get that scripture in our line and see if it won't work. I mean, you, get, you got God's word on it. Amen. Prove him and see if he won't do the things that he promised.